Hi, this is Bert Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010 Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the questions and answers to pretest for Chapter 4 on variability. The first question is, when open-ended scores are present in the data, which measure of variability is most appropriate? The choices are standard deviation, quartile, such as the interquartile range, uh, the range, or the high and low scores, or the median. The answer to this one is B, the quartiles, such as the interquartile range. So, um, for example here, anytime you're dealing with uh, quartiles, the median, the interquartile range, the first thing you should always do is take the data and put it in order. So here I've reordered it from lowest to highest, and you see I've got the 5 plus there at the end. The nice thing about this is the 5 plus is at the far end, and it doesn't even figure into the calculation of the quartiles, and that's one of the reasons that uh, the interquartile range works so well when you have uh, open-ended scores, undefined scores, you got skewed data, a lot of the peculiarities that the, the IQR still works very well in those situations. Number two, when data are negatively skewed, which measure of variability is most appropriate? We have the same choices as last time. Quartile, such as the interquartile range, the standard deviation, the range, or the median. The answer, again, in this situation for negatively skewed is the quartiles. Um, Let's take a look here. We've got a negatively skewed distribution. And again, you can tell that while we have some really outlying scores on the far left there, they would not be included in the calculation of the quartiles. The first quartile would be in that one bar that's sticking up on the left. And that, again, makes the interquartile range a relatively robust measure of spread uh, for a lot of variations on distributions. Number three, for a normal distribution, which measure of variability is most efficient? That's in the statistical sense. Um, and the choices are the same ones. They are the quartiles, the range, the standard deviation, or the median. And in this situation, the answer is the standard deviation. Um, efficiency means being able to get a certain level of precision with a particular, uh, with a smaller number of people. Uh, so being able to be more accurate with fewer people. And the standard deviation is best at that as long as you have a well-behaved normal distribution. If it's really skewed or you got a lot of outliers, it's, it's no longer the case. But for a normal distribution, the standard deviation is going to work the best. Uh, for the interquartile range, you're going to need a lot more. For the range, I, you know, I can make no bets. All right, number four, which measure requires a degrees of freedom calculation? And the choices are the sample variance, the population standard deviation, the sample IQR or interquartile range of the population range. Well, the answer in this case is the sample variance. Um, the reason for this is the population formulas don't require degrees of freedom. They just use uh, population size, and the IQR uh, doesn't use that stuff. Let's look, take a look, quick look at the formulas themselves. The top left one here that says S squared, that is the sample variance. And you see on the top we have the sum of squared deviations from the mean. And the bottom part, the denominator is N minus 1. That's the degrees of freedom for this particular calculation. And there's other uh, situations where the degrees of freedom is something else like N minus 2 or N minus K minus 1 or whatever. But in this situation, it's just N minus 1. Uh, the one on the right of that is the population. And um, you see that on the far right, it, under the square root there, it has n. So there's no degrees of freedom there. The IQR on the bottom left just needs the quartiles, and those don't depend on sample size necessarily. And the range is just the maximum minus the minimum. So anyhow, that's uh, that. The, the sample variance of these four is the only one that requires a, a degrees of freedom calculation. All right, fifth question. A narrow distribution that is sharply pointed in the middle and has many outliers is also called... The choices are negatively skewed, positively skewed, leptocurtic, or platocurtic. Well, in this case, the answer is leptocurtic. You may remember lepto means thin or narrow, and curtic means a bulge. Uh, here's our little illustration of it. On the left, we have a platocurtic, which means a flat distribution. Well, relatively flat. It's not a uniform distribution because it still tapers off at the ends. The mesocurtic or normal distribution is there in the middle, and the leptocurtic is on the far right, and that is the one that has um, a, a very narrow top, and it actually, though it doesn't show in this particular illustration, it has long uh, tails with many outliers. And that's it for uh, the pretest for Chapter 4. We'll see you for the first practice test.